This is the last version that I've made for the so-called Arduino based smartwatch. Now this is the new PCB that I've just made. In this video I will show you what new things this PCB has, how to mount it and how we could use it. Because once you have the PCB mounted, you could upload the last code from the previous version and still use it as a smartwatch with the Bluetooth option. But since this board has a lot of components on it, I would like to show it to you from the point of view as it would be a development board and share with you some example codes for each part of the PCB. In this way I think you will learn a lot more, since you could see each example one by one. I will also show you what new features this board has in compare with the old one and all the things it could do. We have LED control, battery voltage analog read, we have alarm interruptions, a buzzer, an OLED screen, a real-time clock, we have FTDA programming using directly the USB connector, also Bluetooth communication on the back, we have some buttons, charging circuit for the LiPo battery and much more. So before we start make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. Also thanks to all my patrons for the support. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is the new PCB for this smartwatch. As you can see it is way smaller so it could fit better on your arm. But at the same time it has some new parts that we will see in this video. Ok so first thing first, this board was possible with the help from my sponsor JLC PCB, which is a PCB manufacturer. So once I have the design made in Easy EDA and run the design rule check, I've downloaded the Gerber files and upload those to glcpcb.com. Once the Gerber was uploaded I've selected 10 PCBs and the green color for the solder mask. That cost me only $2 and 6 more dollars for shipping to Spain. Ok so I've received the boards as always in just 7 days, the order process was very easy. After a quick inspection all the board seems to be perfect and with good finish. Ok so I want to show you this project as it would be a development board review and show you what the board could do. We could learn a lot with this board. First of all you will learn how to solder all the components. You will learn why we need each component to program the chip, get the time and charge the battery and so on. Then it has some buttons on the side so you could test digital inputs and get started with basic Arduino programming. It also has an LED and a buzzer, so you could also test analog outputs and fade the LED, or if you want just ring the buzzer. Ok so on the back we have a real time clock chip, or so called an RTC, that uses an I2C communication. So you could also test that out and get the real time, the date, temperature and the day of the week. On the back the board still has a Bluetooth module. But this time I've used directly the SMD module solder on the back, so it will occupy less space compared with the last version. So you could learn how to get data from this Bluetooth module using the word communication. Ok so the board has a few more components, but finally we have the OLED display control with I2C communication as well, so you could also play around with this screen and by that improve your skills with Arduino. For each of these parts, below you will find an example code and the needed libraries so you could start playing around with this board once you have all the components soldered. I also shared the Gerber files for this board and the part list if you want to build it. I think building this project would improve your electronic skills since you will work with the schematic of the PCB, then you will see the layout of the PCB and order the board from a manufacturer solder both SMD and through hole components using solder paste and so on, then we get to programming, where you will try all kind of examples, from simple and basic digital read and write, to I2C and word communications, power control, timing and more. Ok so let's start. First I will explain you all the components of the board and in which order you should solder those components. At the same time please download the full schematic and have it in front of you in order to see all the values and names of each component and all the connections. So first thing first we solder the Atmega 328 chip in the middle. Then we add the 60MHz crystal, the R4 1MOhms resistor, 
the R7 10 kilo ohms resistor, the C7 capacitor of 100 nanofarads, and the C3 DTR capacitor of also 100 nanofarads. With these six components, we could test if the chip works. To spare some money, I took all these components out of a Chinese version of the Arduino Nano. Watch the previous video of this project in order to see how to test if this chip works using an FTA programmer connected to these ward pins on the back of the PCB. Ok, so if the chip works, we can solder the USB connector and all the charging components for the LiPo battery. All these components here are used to charge and protect the 3.7V LiPo battery for overcharge and over discharge. See the values of each component on the schematic. Once the charging circuit is soldered, test if it works. Connect the battery and plug the USB cable and the red light will indicate charging and the blue light standby. The voltage at VCC right now should be 4.2V. Check that with the multimeter as well. On the front part of the PCB, down here we have two LEDs with two resistors. One is red and the other one is blue. When the battery is charging, we get the red light. When the battery is full, the blue light will turn on. Ok, so if the battery is charging and the circuit works, we can solder the wart chip, which is the CH340C. If you use the CH340G, you will also need a 12 MHz crystal and some capacitors, as this Arduino Nano has. So, solder the CH340 chip, and the R18 and 19 resistors of 1 kilo ohms. Now we can test if we can program the chip using the USB connector instead of the external FTDA programmer. Plug the board, compile and upload a test sketch. If that works, we can keep soldering components. I now solder the real-time clock on the back, the DS3231 chip, and that will give us the date, the day of the week, the temperature and the alarm interruption. Solder the rest of the resistors for the real-time chip. The resistors for the push buttons and the push buttons as well. Also the small LED and its resistor and the buzzer on the back. Ok, now it's time for the Bluetooth circuit. It needs a 3.3 voltage regulator. I've used the C620 regulator IC, which on my board is named U8. Solder that the capacitors at the output and then connect the USB and test if you have around 3.3 volts at the output pin. If yes, we can solder the small MOSFET and the gate resistor and the Bluetooth module on the back. This MOSFET is used to turn on and off the Bluetooth module and by that save some power if you don't want to use the Bluetooth connection. The previous board didn't have this feature, so the power consumption was always high and you couldn't turn the Bluetooth off. For the Bluetooth module, you only need to solder a few pins, as in the schematic, not all the pins. Ok, so now on the board, you will also see some very small pads. These are connections that can be made with some solder. We have one for the buzzer, one for the RTC supply, and two for the RX and TX pins of the Bluetooth module. So, if you want the buzzer to be connected, make that connection between these small pads of R17 using some solder. Do the same for the real-time clock chip on R13, but don't make the connections between these small pads for the Bluetooth module yet. If the module is connected to the RX and TX pins, we can program the chip. That's why I've placed these pads. So we can program the chip, disconnect the USB cable, solder the pads and make the connection, and we are good to go. If you want to re-upload the code, desolder these connections, upload the new code, and make back the connections. Or if you don't want to use the Bluetooth module, just don't make the connections at all. Before you solder the I2C screen, make sure that all the components are working because once you solder the screen on top, you can't see what is below anymore. Test the LED, the battery analog read, the CH340 chip and so on. Then solder the screen and our smartwatch board is finally ready. So what it could do? Well first we have the watch code. Go below and download the code named Simple Watch. This code won't use the Bluetooth option, but it will make this board to be a normal watch. Upload the code and now we have on the screen the day of the week, the battery level, the time and the date. If you don't do anything for 10 seconds, it will go to sleep and enter the ultra low power mode. 
As you can see right now, with the display turned on, it needs around 40 mA. And when it gets into sleep mode, only 1.38 mA. So with this 100 mA hour battery, it could last up to 2 or 3 days before it needs recharging. To recharge it, just plug the USB connector. Ok, so now long press the middle button and we get into the menu. Here we can set the time, we can set an alarm, turn off the beeps for the buzzer, show the watch and logo, enter a stopwatch counter or go back. So the set time option is very basic. Enter and select the time, the date and the day of the week and it will get saved to the real time clock chip. But now we can set an alarm. Choose the hour and the minute and it will set an alarm. Now we have this small icon of a clock on the corner. Even if the watch is into sleep mode, when the alarm time is reached, the interruption will wake up the clock and ring the alarm. The beeps will go on for a minute and then they will stop. Or if I press the middle button, we can cancel the alarm manually. Also, after the alarm is set, if I long press the top button on the main menu, we can enable or disable the alarm and the clock icon would appear or disappear. Ok, the sound on and off option will only enable or disable the beeps each time we press a button. With the beeps on, as you can see, it beeps each time that I do something. Now with the sound off, the beeps are disabled. Ok, the show logo option is not relevant at all. It will only display a binary logo that I've made with the image to LCD software, in this case the watch and logo that I've made. Ok, so finally we have a stopwatch. Enter this menu and we can start the stopwatch and it will count seconds, minutes and hours. We can pause the counter with the middle button. Reset the value with the bottom one and exit this menu with the top button. Pretty simple design. And that's it with this simple watch code. You could also upload the last smartwatch code that also uses the Bluetooth connection as in the past tutorial and feel free to improve this code however you want since the code is not perfect at all. Below this video you will also find some more examples that you could do with this board. Starting with very basic fade examples where you could control the brightness of an LED using the analog write function. Then we have some digital read examples where you will detect if one button is pressed or not. You also have examples to print some logos or text on the iSwear C OLED display and play around with that. You will find a small example that will show you how to read and write data to the real time clock chip, get the time, get the temperature, how to set the alarm and so on and by that get used to this chip. You could also use the Bluetooth connection and display that on the screen as we have seen in the past tutorial where we get data from the Notiduino app when I receive a call, a Twitter message and so on. Using these examples you could learn more, improve your coding skills and make your own code for this smartwatch. Check my webpage electronews.com for more details, step by step tutorials for beginners with this board and much more. I've also 3D printed a crude case for this watch if you want to protect it a little bit. You could wear this watch directly with the belt if you want. There is some protection between the watch and your hand in case that you sweat since you have two layers of the belt between your hand and the PCB. You will also find links for this kind of belt below as well. And if you use this 3D case, just place the watch inside and glue the top part. It has holes for the charging plug and the side push buttons. I've used transparent PLA so I could see the LED's indicators as well. There could be a better 3D design, but I had no more time for that. I will post an upgrade soon. So guys that's it, if you want to build this project, you have everything you need below in the description and on my webpage electronoops.com. Also a bunch of examples that you could run with this board and by that you will learn more. Please consider helping my projects on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me and will keep this kind of videos going. So thanks again and see you later guys.